The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murders, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Reading the Gospel today was Karen Huffman, who is the Chief Financial Officer of Lutheran Community Services Northwest. We have the rare blessing of having a CFO who not only has a CPA, but was a graduate of Trinity Lutheran Seminary. Good morning, my name is David Dewey, and I am the President and CEO of Lutheran Community Services Northwest. My wife, Jane, and I wish I could join you in person today because Gig Harbor has been our home for over 30 years, and we love visiting Agnes Day. To summarize the point of the parable of the wedding feast, God sent his son into the world, and the very people who should have celebrated his coming rejected him, bringing judgment upon themselves as, as a result, the kingdom of heaven was opened up to anyone who would set aside their own righteousness and by faith accept the righteousness God provided in Jesus. I was very pleased to open your website and see all of your smiling faces holding a sign that said, you are welcome here. That has been our mantra at Lutheran Community Services for almost a hundred years. We are experts at welcoming the stranger. From Spokane to Seattle, Portland to Klamath Falls, Boise to the Tri-Cities, and many places in between, including Gig Harbor, LCS Northwest welcomes the stranger and cares for over 40,000 people a year. Today, I want to focus on two programs that are in your backyard. The first is refugee resettlement. You have helped us welcome over 45,000 children of God from around the world to start a new home in the Northwest. Let me repeat that. You have helped us welcome over 45,000 children of God from around the world to start a new home in the Northwest. I want to show you a quick little video clip so you can see some of their faces. For refugees and immigrants, a single plate or eating alone is equal to isolation. Isolation is the most threatening aspect of leaving their homeland behind and rebuilding a life in the United States. At Lutheran Community Services Northwest, we witness the enormous challenges of learning English, of supporting a family, of children assimilating quickly and leaving parents behind. But during difficult and uncertain times, how do families cope? All over the world, families come together at mealtime and they share. At Lutheran Community Services Northwest, we set the table for refugee families 
by giving them the emotional and practical support they need to rebuild their lives. Through the pandemic and all the other barriers to integration, we are there. As you know, it is a very difficult time for our refugee and immigration services. We as a country have not been very welcoming lately. But take heart. I believe we will be a welcoming nation again very soon. God has other plans. No one has been harder hit by the pandemic than our seniors. We were already seeing record numbers of depression and feeling of isolation by our seniors. And then COVID-19 hit. Again, take heart. We have put on our protective gear and dropped supplies at their doors. And pretty soon, Santa will also be making a visit to our seniors from a safe distance. Please take a look at our Santa for Seniors program and really look into the seniors' eyes. Dear Santa, I know it's been a long time since I've written. Can I ask you a favor? I know many seniors who could use a bit of joy and cheer. Most people do not realize the number of people that truly are alone. And then if you are impaired, a shut-in, you become more and more isolated. The depression and the aloneness can be even worse during the holidays. So, Santa, could you please help? Now I gotta hop up on the roof, check with Rudolph, make sure that everything's okay and my sleigh is ready for the upcoming oh, cool. event. Merry Christmas. This is so much fun, bringing joy to our isolated seniors in our community. It takes a lot of preparation to make it happen. The volunteer groups come in and they put the bags together for Santa. And then we partner up with other groups within the community and we give the gift bags out. And I volunteered last year and saw what an impact it played on these people's life that are really the forgotten ones in our society. Santa for Seniors is a program through Lutheran Community Services. It helps to acknowledge and honor our seniors during the holiday times. We partner with low-income housing, food banks that support seniors on specific days, nursing homes. The Santa Parade is put on by the 6th Avenue Business District and it is a community event. Center for Seniors wanted to be a part of that. Are you going to write a card for a senior? So that we could help to foster that there's different things that you can do to help support our seniors during the holidays. This is a great opportunity to bridge the gap between generations and really bring the community together and take care of our seniors. I've had seniors tell me uh, when they've received their gift bag that this is often the only thing that they'll receive this year. They might have family in the area, but they're pretty much left alone. One senior told us that uh, it had been seven years since she had even celebrated Christmas. We'll get a lot of hugs, we'll see some tears, but overall it's just the joy of being a part of the season again. I cannot emphasize how much this truly means and how much it brightens a person's life. Well, I guess you would say this is a labor of love. Um, to see the impact that just a simple gift makes to these forgotten seniors. How can you help? You can volunteer, you can host an item drive, or you can donate. 
and this will bring joy to our isolated seniors in our community. Did you see the joy in some of those faces? Some of our saints slash seniors? I've witnessed it these isolated seniors when we visit and there's a sense of hope and wonder that comes back because they haven't been forgotten. Santa for Seniors is just one of the programs we provide to make sure seniors are not forgotten. During this pandemic, the demand for our Meals on Wheels program has more than doubled. So we are continuing to remember our isolated seniors and all the work we do at Lutheran uh, is really because of folks like you. And so I want to thank you for welcoming us, welcoming our services into your community. Now I want to close with a prayer uh, that has meant a lot to me over the years that I've been with Lutheran. And uh, I want to challenge you to be a little bit interactive. I know you're sitting on your comfy couch or a chair and having your coffee, but I want us to get a little Baptist. And, and after, I want this to be interactive. Uh, uh, and I'll be at home watching at the same time as you. So I'll be listening to seeing if I can hear some loud amens. But here's the closing prayer. And it's more of a challenge to all of us. Uh, and you'll know when you can pitch in. May God bless us with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that we may seek truth, truth boldly and love wholeheartedly. Amen? Amen. May God bless us with a holy anger. That's right, a holy anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. Amen? Amen. May God bless us with tears to shed with and for those who suffer from pain, rejection, hunger, grief of war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain into joy. Amen? Amen. This is one of my favorite. May God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we really can make a difference in this world so that we are able, with God's grace and help, to do what others claim cannot be done, to bring justice and kindness to all, to heal, serve, love, and reconcile. Amen? Amen. And the blessing of God, our loving creator, Jesus Christ, our brother and savior, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide, be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Now to our hymn of the day.